So as 2022 is nearing an end, we have about three months left of this quarter. I did the math and I'm essentially about to double my YouTube automation cash cow revenue compared to last year's compared to 2022 and 2022. I have practically by the time this year ends would have doubled my YouTube cash cow revenue. And these are the three things that I do believe has helped me achieve this 100% growth essentially. So the first thing that a lot of people fail to understand is that you can turn one viewer into multiple views. So what I mean by this is that when you and I, we watch YouTube videos, we watch more than one YouTube video around the same topic, don't we? So if I'm looking at the newest iPhone 14, I don't just watch a single person's review on the iPhone 14. I watch a lot of videos surrounding the iPhone 14. So with that, you have an individual who's watching multiple videos surrounding the same topic. How can you turn one viewer into multiple views? So with one, you can create end screens, okay? Have end screens lead to a specific video that you think they'd wanna watch next. So a common mistake that, it's not a mistake, but it's still better than nothing, but sometimes people would just default the end screen to choose best match video or most recent video. I, for one, I actually like choosing a specific video that I think people actually will wanna watch next after I upload my video. So when my project manager or I upload the video, we actually choose a specific video that we think our audience would wanna watch next after they watch that current video. So it involves, again, turning one viewer into multiple views. Other ways you can do this is that you can include a pinned comment leading to another video. So that same video that you put in your end screen, you can put in the pinned comment, you can put it in the description, and you can also playlist it together. Those are all in built in YouTube features that people should be utilizing to turn one viewer into multiple views. Because even so, imagine if you had 10,000 viewers and like 20% of them watched at least two of your videos, that's a good marginal increase of views, but still having the same amount of people. So really utilize YouTube's built-in features, allowing you to turn one viewer into multiple views. And don't stop thinking that one viewer equals one view or one individual equals one view. Even with this channel myself, I like to think that if someone lands on my channel, I'm hoping and I'm trying to get them to watch two or more videos. Moving on to the second thing, so tying back to the title of this video, the three things that doubled my YouTube automation cash cow channel revenue, this is an accumulated total of all my channels together. So with the second thing, spreading yourself into multiple niches, but within the same niche, this allows you to leverage your existing audience. So what I mean by this tip is that if you're gonna start more channels, ideally your first channel should be able to cover the overhead for your main channel and your second channel, but going within the same niche allows you to leverage your existing audience. So as always, my go-to niche, I always tell everyone to go into just because I'm a huge sports fan, is sports. So if you have a sports channel that's doing like 10K a month, start a second channel, but also do sports ideally the same sport. And the reason why is because that audience, that community board, those end screens, you can utilize the first channel's end screens, the community board, pinned comments. You can use all of those to push traffic to the second channel. The second channel being within the same niche, it essentially will grow that channel as well. And hopefully that second channel's videos start getting picked up by the algorithm as well. So with that, you can use like an extension called TubeBuddy, which allows you to bulk change end screens. And that's why YouTube itself, you can even choose end screens of other videos that aren't yours, which allows this strategy uh, starting channels within the same niche to work well when it comes to end screening your primary channel's videos to your secondary channel's videos. If I can go back in time, what I would have done is I probably would have just stayed within the same niche rather than thinking that it's cool to start channels in celebrity sports, TV shows, movies, technology, space. I have a lot of different channels, but it doesn't really make sense to leverage the existing audience of each other just because all those niches are different, therefore all their audiences are different. So starting over, I probably would have started more channels within the same niche and that's what I'm doing now. But rewind like two years ago, I would have started with the same niche. I think it would have been easier for me to leverage my existing audience. If you have one channel, really highly consider about when you're starting a second channel to start within the same niche. It doesn't matter if you're in two different niches. I honestly think like if you're in sports and celebrities, yeah, that's cool. Now you have your feet wet in like two different niches, but it probably would have been easier to just, if you have a celebrity channel, leverage that audience and start another celebrity channel. So moving on to the third thing, giving your video a second chance with TubeBuddy split test. And then as a disclaimer, TubeBuddy split test, it is a paid feature, but you don't have to use TubeBuddy, okay? You don't have to use TubeBuddy. Your videos on YouTube, you shouldn't micromanage every single video that you upload. But once you start posting, there are some videos, once you actually understand your audience, that you'll kind of understand them to the sense that, okay, this video should have worked for my audience, but why didn't it work? And that type of mentality is gonna come from you posting videos. A beginners, you probably won't have that mentality yet unless you really truly understand your niche. But when you think of 
your video is being posted like that, like why didn't that video work when it was supposed to? Re-upload the video with a different thumbnail or simply change out the thumbnail or use a two-buddy split test, okay? Give your videos a second chance if you truly believe that they should have worked. Give them a second chance, okay? So with that, on some of my channels, I went over with the YSS or the YouTube Success System community about how I've re-uploaded videos and they've gone viral before or I've changed out thumbnails and they've gone viral before. This has happened to me multiple times and it's something that you can do too, but I don't recommend that you do it for every single one of your videos. Do it on videos which you truly believe should have been viral videos, okay? And it's hard to think that way, you know? If you're posting 15 times a month and you honestly think that all 15 of your videos should be going viral, I mean, props to you. Just because of this model of YouTube and the way the quantity and quality kind of skill works. Honestly, even me, I try to post every single video to go viral, but again, sometimes I'm posting daily, sometimes I'm posting 15 times per month on my channels. It doesn't mean that every single video is viral potential. Okay, sometimes I'm posting just for the consistency and having that habit built upon me. But again, once you start posting your channel, you're gonna start coming across videos which you feel like should have gone viral. Give them a second chance by re-uploading it or give them a second chance by changing up the thumbnail or setting up a two buddy split test for it. So if you wanna learn more tips or hacks that other YouTube automation channel owners aren't telling you, make sure to watch this video next.